the Pegasus Entertainment series has blast processing. So, what's blast processing? I don't know. <laughs> Pegasus does. Eight-bit graphics. That same thing as Nintendo. Pegasus does. Eight-bit sports games. You can also do that on Nintendo. Pegasus does. Pegasus does. Pegasus does. Pegasus does. Pegasus does. What Nintendo does. So I've wanted to talk about some of the knockoff video game stuff on bootleg zones for a while, and I thought I'd start it off with the Pegasus. Now, there were a lot of areas that didn't actually have an official Famicom or Nintendo Entertainment System release, and that's where these Famicom clones, or Famiclones as they're often referred to, come in. The Pegasus is definitely one of the better known Famiclones, having spanned over a few countries, being the most popular in Bosnia, Serbia, and Poland. And mine came from none of those countries! This one actually came from Greece. Seeing as it spanned over a few countries and seen multiple versions, the Pegasus has had a lot of different logos, but I think you can tell which one is my favorite. When I seen a bootleg Nintendo system with a Sega Genesis knockoff logo, I just needed to grab this one. Cause I have a serious problem. Hmm. And my Pegasus is model number MT Jackpot Sad Face. And here's another thing that grabbed my attention about this system, it being a new model of 94. I love 94, you know, hot off the new release of the Nintendo and Famicom. But yes, obviously if it's got Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles on it, it's gonna get my attention as well. Cause ninjas are too violent, they're just heroes! At first I thought Don got shafted on here, but I guess he's just a really reddish purple as that looks to be his bow staff. And I think his picture is my favorite with his little seductive eating pizza pose. And below that we've got Boys Soccer Team, which a few people might know as Captain Tsubasa, but it's more popularly known as Boys Soccer Team. And this was designed in Japan. What, the system and games you ripped off? Yeah, I suppose. And luckily, we always know we got something good with Pegasus since we've got the total quality Pegasus commitment. Now obviously this is their version of the Nintendo Seal of Quality, which I kind of love that all the bootleggers of Nintendo stuff just put their own version of the Seal of Quality on their stuff. This was supposed to be a form of protection so that you'd only get official Nintendo products, but I bet a lot of people didn't really know the difference. Or they didn't care. Infrared wireless system? Alright, I guess if that's legit, that's something Nintendo don't. And speaking of Nintendo, to experience fantastic images and amazing reality. Eh, it fits my reality. And here it is, the Pegasus Computer Family Game, still freshly sealed from New Model 94. Now oh, look at this, isn't that cute? They've got the company name hidden under the flap. Apparently, Pegasus is a registered trademark of Marauder Traders in Dubai. Now you can even ring them up or fax them. I like that they give you this information, but try to hide it. Now the version of the Pegasus I got is clearly based on the Super Famicom system. Even the controller is almost exactly like a Super Famicom controller. But look, this was still sealed. Why does it look like someone was chewing on my controller? Oh, well, isn't this lovely? Apparently the zapper cord melted in with the styrofoam at some point. And it also has the look of someone being too hungry around it. The Pegasus Zapper is also noticeably much lighter than the official Nintendo Zapper. The controller is also ever so slightly lighter than an official Super Nintendo controller. What? It's also missing L and R? How am I supposed to play regular Nintendo without L and R? So the thing a lot of these Famiclones would do when copying controllers with extra buttons than the Nintendo had is they just make them turbo. Or you just have a whole bunch of buttons that did the same thing as a and B. And luckily the Pegasus knew when copying the Super Famicom controller was going too close because they switched where the red and green button were. Ugh, I guess this adapter's seen better days. Oh wait, no it hasn't, this is brand new. And uh, ugh, disgusting European AC adapter! 
And speaking of outlets, well, the Nintendo and Super Nintendo both had specific ports for their controllers. Most Famiclones, it seems, use the same ports you'd find on an Atari or Sega Genesis controller. Though interestingly, and kind of strangely, the Zapper actually uses a port with more pins. Though what is nice about this is it means you can plug both controllers in and the Zapper at the same time. You can't do that on Nintendo! Unless you had a four score or a satellite, and even then I don't really remember the Zapper's compatibility with those. So the gun in the box not only has Pegasus on it, which this one does not, but it also kind of looks more like a cross between a Sega Phaser and a Zapper, whereas the actual gun that comes with it just looks more like the Nintendo Zapper. The controllers also look like they had a piece of paper glued to them that said Pegasus, which is missing from the actual controller. Guess that was way beyond the budget for mass production. And the power and reset button are lighter than on the box, but I gotta say, I think the eject button looks a lot cooler on the actual thing, even if it does jack shit. You can see the reset button at least has a function, it's just that these aren't powerful enough to actually push the game out of the slot. So apparently redundancy is key with the sticker on the back, as it tells us it's a TV game console, then also lets us know that it's a video computer game. It also lets us know that it's SP60, whatever that is, and it's not apparently a serial number since that's below here, or at least is supposed to be. And this is apparently how the infrared gimmick is supposed to work. It's just you plug one of these antennas to the system and the other to the RF switch. I did attempt to plug in the wireless RF connectors, but they don't actually fit, which is probably a PAL difference or something, because yes, this is a PAL system, and even if I did get them to work, the best I could probably get is a scrambled signal. Now as I mentioned, there are different versions of the Pegasus, one based off the original Famicom instead, and one with really horrible looking controllers. I'm glad mine came with the Super Famicom style ones, cause those look disgusting! <laughs> The boxes for some of these are amazing too, with female Robocop or the family from the Nintendo box with a Pegasus slapped over it. And apparently Nintendo Compatible saw that and thought, what an amazing idea, and did it even lazier. I've also seen the exact same model as my Pegasus called Master Games or Supercom. Of course, with these things, it's hard to say if it's a ripoff of the ripoff or just rebranded. But whatever, just like Johnny Cage has switched to Bloodstorm, Santa has switched to Pegasus, and that's a good enough endorsement for me, let's play this thing. Did someone say Famiclone? No. I just did. Okay, let's play it. Alright. Alright, I've got Thomas with me here because he's a Pegasus expert. Definitely I'm a Pegasus expert. I'm all about the winged horses and Greek mythology. No. It's nothing to do with Unchained Melody. Bye. Which Nintendo has everything to do with. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get a PAL converter so we could actually play this system, and it doesn't work. It just shows me a frozen screen, so we're going to be looking over here to see anything on this game on a delay, which is why we can't really play it properly. <laughs> Unacceptable. Isn't it amazing? That is an amazing <laughs> list of games. Yeah, but the scene's changing and now they're in a tent. Oh! See? I didn't even realize. No. Oh, my mind is blown now. Yeah. And apparently that was too much for the cartridge version, so they took this out. <laughs> so are well. seagulls. I'd love to know who actually, like, sat down and made a chiptune version of Unchained Melody. <laughs> it's like, 
man, this is gonna really speak to those stupid gamers. <laughs> Definitely, because gamers are like hardcore Patrick Swayze loving. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So even though the Pegasus is pal and my converter didn't work, we still have a way to play this on an NTSC system, as I have a multi cart that is almost the exact same. So multi carts like the 9,999,999-1 are commonly known as the Unchained Melody multi carts, and of course they show pictures from games that have absolutely nothing to do with this cartridge. Of course, most prominently, they show Street Fighter. Why wouldn't they? They even have some weird redrawn pictures for some of the games that are actually on here, like Duck Hunt. Or for games that are on different versions of this multi-card, I suppose, but not my actual cartridge. So yeah, this is the same games list and the same backdrop as the Pegasus built-in game. But no Unchained Melody and no Seagulls. No And no scene story. changing, yeah. Actually, Phalus, there are a couple games on the Pegasus built-in multi-cart that didn't appear on the 10 million minus one cart. Wild Gunman and Dr. Mario both appear on here, so, you know, it got a bit closer to that 9,999,999 games list. And other versions of it even included Lunar Ball and Galaxian, so, like, halfway there. I'm just not into picking games without Unchained Melody playing, honestly. Yeah, have something to keep us entertained while we decide if Mario G or Mario J is better. I know. I like that Battle City is like the only one they change the title on sometimes with these. <laughs> like, let's see what Tank 406 is. Tank 19... Tank G 1990. Oh! By YS. It's probably just because it's so easy to change the title screen in that game. Yeah, probably. There, I remember Dude. hacking that back in high school and calling it Crappy Tank. Oh. And I thought that was <laughs> really cool. Hey, look, I changed Battle City to Crappy Tank. You got it. <laughs> tank B. Yes. Look, they took out Clay Shooter from Duck Hunt to pretend it's its own game. Ooh, but they still left the Duck Hunt title screen. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, Mario M502, Ooh. you get to play this. Ooh, I do. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Here. Yeah. All right. I'll hold the second I get, This is going to be quite the experience, uh, is it? I have to so press, press A. a. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go. All right. So there is a little twist in Whoa. this game. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Random moon Woo! jumps. You know what? I used to have Game Genie code that did that. <laughs> just random ones? Uh, not just random, but it... Yeah, because I know there is the one that did the you're doing turbo, I think. There. Oh, I am. Oh, I'm thinking of an actual A button. Yeah. No! Unless you switch them. See, it's at it's random floaty. that he moon jumps, so it's like it can kill you just as well as aid you. Because you don't know when he wants to do it. I know, that's where I'm getting all like. Yeah. What's going on here? Like, see, whoa! Yeah, see, you don't know, that's why. Mario, what are you thinking? I, that's it, I... it's Mario M for moon jumps. Oh! Ah! Gotta be it. Yeah. Alright, let's see. Let's see if I can complete the level, or if when he walks out the flagpole, or, <laughs> or he could just or you're not. <laughs> yeah, I could do that too. That was embarrassing. I can't believe you. I'm gonna blame the wonky controls. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with just having like, a randomly <laughs> moon jump on Even you. Even though he didn't moon jump, I was like feeling that he was going to. Yeah, that's it. See, and I was first Woo! trying this just to make sure it worked I'm and like, stuff, and I was like, all right, I'll just do right. Mario for a second, and it's like, what? And I was like, oh, is there a way to control this? Do you hold A and you'll do it? No. No. <laughs> just random. Just nice. Whenever he wants. I like, yeah. I was hoping you'd fly away over the castle like he used to with Game Genie. Yeah. That's just random, I guess. <laughs> Randomly, you can't win anymore. Bye. <laughs> like, I love, too, like... that, like, the moon jump will kill your momentum if you're not planning for it sometimes. So Yeah, it's just like... 
chance. It's Woo! Just like, Oops. Uh oh, I'm stuck over a big hole and I can't use this moon jump to get to either side. Dead. <laughs> no! It jumped on me. You notice the sounds are slightly sped up too, because it's a PAL version. Ooh. So all the sound effects are slightly wrong. It's like something only someone who's played this game too much would notice. Yeah, everything's like a little bit higher pitched. Yeah. I can hear it with the, the underworld music for sure. Yeah. It's like... The sound effects really get me too, like the jump sounds slightly wrong. This is the best let's play of Mario. <laughs> it is. This is the most impressive let's play. Oh, oh no. No. Well, actually, it's probably the only uh, let's play of Mario 502 and the so. Probably. <laughs> that, I would people not... didn't bother with that one. <laughs> See, this would be one of those levels where he randomly just moon jumps into Lakitu and yeah. dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, he hasn't been doing so. Oh, he just. Oh, yeah, there. he just tried there. It's weird because there's just that. I'm so used to this game that just like any tiny little bit of touchiness being different, I'm like, wah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your lies don't go down, by the way. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. oh, wow, wow, I am hearing the sound effects a lot more now that you pointed it out, too. I was noticing the music more, but... <laughs> Stupid float jump. <laughs> Forget you, coins. Mario 502M. Let's see. Whoa! <laughs> Stupid moon jump! Alright. <laughs> All I want to do is stop Beetle. Come on. It's like, you can't stop that. What? Okay. Get down! <laughs> Woo! Whoa. Oh. oh, come on! Like, look, okay. Yeah. Like, I bet they put this in, it's like, this will be fun for the machine. This will be and... funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll screw with them. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes that was more you right. can't stomp that enemy, because you'll fly away. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Oh, that- oh, okay. Oh. It's okay when it's like, oh, come on now. Yeah. Half floaty, half not. Okay. That jump would have been bad, though, if you moon jumped off the middle piece. The middle piece! See, I don't want to moon jump over those little things and <laughs> I know. fall into the stupid pit. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> The big holes get me all freaked out because I'm like, am yeah. I gonna do it? Or yeah. Am I gonna? Come on now! Whoa. I don't want to moon jump. I'll you know die. What? I'm just gonna moon jump as far as yeah. I can. Yeah. I don't like, care. Like at least if you bounce off an enemy with it, you can control it a little. And the little precision jumps they get me all messed up. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like, whoa! He, he kind of went. He sort of floated right to the door instead of. Oh, I didn't notice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was worried he's gonna float over top of that brick that blocks you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oh, well, I guess that's the end of this. You're doing too well now. You'll be cutting this part. No! <laughs> I remember when you were making that hack of Mario one that time and you made, oh, tried to make yeah. it as hard as you could. And, yeah. you, like, if you get us to test it and it's like, oh, you got fire flowers, I gotta get rid of one of those question <laughs> marks because the game's too easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I wish. I, like, I still have that hack, but it doesn't play right. <laughs> like on most emulators, I think Nesticle will still play yeah. it. <laughs> that was great back when you had Nesticle, and it was like you'd hack something, and it would be like, "Oh, cool, this is good." And then you'd get real emulators, and it wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, "Oh, Nesticle ruined my hack by yeah. making me think it works." <laughs> that was, see, that was not nice. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Yeah, I was a bastard in that Mario hack. <laughs> it was great. Did like a bunch of those things where you had to just like, just um, not jump on the springboard, but just kind of use your momentum as a yes. low jump with it. <laughs> and if you use it, you'll hit something and it'll knock you down. Yeah, and you're dead. A fucking invisible coin. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, that's great. Oh look, I gotta jump over this whole invisible coin in the way. <laughs> Can't do it. Okay, let's try it this way. Invisible coin. Yeah. You gotta get the exact one spot without the invisible coin in the way. Yeah. And I remember I put Bowser at the end of one one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got this. You're gonna be the Mario 502M oh! champion! Oh! Yeah! It's amazing! That's Thank you, Mario M502. 502M. 502M? Whoa. That's a world record. Ooh. The system feels a bit light, so it kind of has a little cheapy feel to it. However, more importantly, it does work just fine, and they took a controller design that is nice. The built-in multi-cart, however, is unfortunately a lame one that just repeats the same games over and over. They do at least have some modifiers on at least Mario, so you can start at later levels or have a higher jump or something. But still, that's not overly impressive, but a built-in game is more of a bonus, really, so seven. They rip the design of the system and the controllers off the Super Famicom, and the built-in game is just a multi-cart with a horrible repeat list, which actually wastes the time to list the same few games over and over to the 9,999,999 mark. One. I do like a knockoff Famicom system being housed in a Super Famicom case with a Sega Genesis style logo. And of course, most important, the built-in multi-cart playing Unchained Melody. Probably the most gamerific tune since Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Yes, there is an alternate version of this multi-cart that uses this tune and shows a screen cap of the Lion King Famicom D-Make. No, it's not included on this cartridge. It's also weird how many variations of this multi-cart there are, and some are even stripped down more visually and have a simpler Unchained Melody chip tune. So mostly for the strange combinations here, it's a 7. I love the box with the Genesis logo and the random games, or rather just random series on the side since they don't bother to show you the NES slash Famicom games of them. It's an appealing enough package as well for a Famiclone, and it's TOTAL QUALITY 8. I think unless it was so shoddy it wouldn't even play the games right is the only way one could really fail here. It could maybe feel a little more solid, but considering it's been kicking around this long and still works fine, it's 9. And the bootleg zones overall is 7! It's a solid Famiclone, and I really like some of its strange traits, and I can't wait to check through all 10 million minus 1 games to make sure nothing is different. <laughs> ah! Now we're going to take a look at my favorite game I've gotten, Quang. Quang? Quang. Quang de Shang. When I tried to look into this, I couldn't really find any extra information on Quang. The only other entry with Quang in relation to Famicom was someone's personal list where they said they had a Quang 116 in one. Whoa! Glitchy text. Yes! Now I'll let you try to press something here for a little bit. Um, I do see G Basic. I don't. That's a pretty catchy tune. <laughs> I can't press anything, but this music is cool, and G Basic makes me want to program something. <laughs> Glad I bothered to include this on here. Yeah, Quang to Shang. Yeah. Is this 
supposed to use like, a keyboard add-on or something? Or I have no idea. Hi. Chinese is telling me something, maybe. Hi guys, check out my Patreon for early mid-roll free episodes, meaning no ads will play in the middle, and other perks.